Hello, I'm State Representative Bob Peterson from the 85th House District. Welcome to Ohio in Focus. Hello and welcome to this edition of Ohio in Focus, a program that brings state government to you. I'm your host, Mike Ditto. We have with us today State Representative Bob Peterson, who serves the 85th House District, which encompasses parts of Pickaway and Ross counties and all of Fayette County. Thank you for joining us today, Representative Peterson. Glad to have you here. It's great to be here. So tell us a little bit about yourself. You've been here for just a few months in your first term as State Representative, but you have a, a little bit of elected office experience prior to this. So tell us about your background, your family, and all the wonderful stuff about you. Sure, it's been a full, uh, busy three or four months. Sure. Um, and uh, I'm a farmer. I farm in Fayette County. I've done that all my life. Grew up on the family farm. I'm the eighth generation of, uh, of Petersons to farm in the United States. Uh, so we go way back. That's what we do. Um, typical Midwest farm, grain, uh, mm -hmm. grain and livestock operation. I farm with my father and my brother. Um, uh, my wife Lisa and I have uh, three children, um, two girls and a boy and high school age and, and Todd's a little younger. But, uh, you know, it's um, been a been an exciting time. We've got a good life, and um, but uh, got involved in uh, running for county commissioner about 14 years ago uh, because of some concerns of, about uh, you know the opportunity to be able to farm in the future, farmland development, and, and you know the growth that was coming into Fayette County. Sure. It seems strange to be talking about growth uh, <laughs> with the Ohio economy and the state it's in sure. right now. But um, you know, uh, got involved in ran for county commissioner, was reelected three times for 14 years as county commissioner. In addition to that, my farm experience, um, I served as president of Ohio Farm Bureau, held a variety of roles, but ultimately sure. served five years as president of Ohio Farm Bureau. And uh, in that capacity, I got the opportunity to spend time in Washington, D.C., talking about agriculture issues, explaining those to congressmen and administration, and actually did a good bit of that in Columbus also. And uh, I saw the differences that good legislation could make and, uh, and what happens when people don't understand issues and maybe pass things that uh, have a negative impact on uh, on the world, and so that's sort of the quick background. That's on very Bob good. <laughs> so, what uh, what made you decide to run for the state legislature to leave the the, the county elected office and, and come to Columbus? Well, I really saw, and I loved I loved uh, serving constituents of Fayette County, representing Fayette County, and and setting things in path. But uh, you know, as county commission, we tried to track jobs in the Fayette County, uh, and uh, the perfect example was Honda. You know, when Honda was looking, you know, wanted to do the worldwide, mm -hmm. did a worldwide search, and they narrowed it down to three locations. And Fayette County, a site in Fayette County, was one of those three locations mm -hmm. because of work we'd done trying to prepare for a large manufacturing site. Mm -hmm. We've got a great site there. Ultimately, they chose to go to Indiana. And as we talked to them, and really other businesses that we tried to track in Fayette County, we heard three things just pretty consistently, no matter what industry it was. Um, uh, first thing we heard was the tax structure in Ohio is too high. Regulatory environments difficult to deal with, and by difficult, usually they meant slow. Uh, usually the regulations weren't horribly out of line, but they were they were slow in response. Mm -hmm. And then the third thing was workman's compensation and the costs. And you know, we we just heard those things consistently, and just didn't seem like there was enough progress being made on that. And the, you know, with the economy where it was, I really felt like the best thing I could do to help Fayette County and the citizens of Fayette County and bring jobs to Ohio and you know rebuild Ohio was run for legislature and felt I had a great background with my Farm Bureau experience and commissioner experience and, and small business experience running a family farm. So, and We've talked with some of our other guests on this show that you know, there are 99 house districts and every district is uh, either similar in some instances and in, in, in some instances they're, they're a little bit different. Jobs in the economy have sort of been the number one issue that has been talked about for the last couple of years. Is that the num number one oh, issue in your district? Without a doubt. Uh, we, have to, we have to turn this economy around in Ohio. We have to grow. The only solution is to grow our way out of it. And we don't do that without jobs. And we have to do the things that uh, will bring jobs here. And all the members of the House are appointed to a variety of House committees. Mm -hmm. uh, what committees do you serve on? Well, my, uh, my focus is on jobs and turning the economy around. And most of the committees I serve on have that function. I uh, served on Finance Committee mm -hmm. that develops a budget. Um, and uh, also serve on Public Utilities. 
you know, energy is very important. My background, I pay a lot of bills. I pay a lot of uh, <laughs> utility bills. So I, you know, that gives me some great insight and perspective sure. on the Public Utilities Committee. I also serve an insurance co committee. Mm -hmm. You know, in, uh, we have the potential to be, uh, we have a lot of insurance companies in Ohio, certainly have the potential to have more, and insurance is a, another bill that uh, most citizens of the state pay. So that was an interesting committee. And then agriculture. I have a great background because of my farm of course. background for the Agriculture and Natural Resources Committee. So those uh, committees, I imagine, are, are keeping you quite busy. and <laughs> Very much so. Uh, you know, uh, Finance Committee especially, you uh, sure. uh, spent uh, you know, almost three months working in great detail on the budget line by line, going through you know, what, what became a 4,000-page document. And, uh, yeah, tell us a little bit about that. I mean, have you heard uh, some uh, impassioned testimony, I imagine? Oh, we heard, for, uh, heard hours of testimony. Uh, and probably, you know, it's, it's a difficult budget. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we had that $8 billion structural deficit. The, the, the exciting things about this budget that uh, the House just passed, the Senate's mm -hmm. working on now, is that, um, you know, it's a balanced budget. It's, it's legitimately balanced. It's not balanced through smoke and mirrors. It's legitimately, ba legitimately balanced. Deals with the structural deficit. Mm -hmm. Resolve that. Shows it, uh, a pathway away from uh, using one-time money going forward. Um, and uh, lowers taxes. Not only doesn't increase taxes, but in some cases lowers taxes. Has a potential to encourage people to, to move back to Ohio or to stay in Ohio. Uh, with a ta with a credit for uh, college tuition going to people who have transferred away, gone to school somewhere else, we have opportunity to track them back uh, with in-state tuition rates. I think that's great for young people and for older people. Uh, the estate tax, uh, uh, doing away with estate tax, that uh, that encourages people to stay where they want to be with family and their homes in Ohio, and rather than incentivizing them to move to another state. And uh, those are exciting things. Now there's plenty of, uh, having said that, uh, you know, there's, there's plenty of pain in this budget. There were plenty of cuts. And frankly, I think that's what the uh, uh, taxpayers ask us to do. Uh, go make the difficult decisions. Um, and uh, I think we did that. One of the bills that was passed out of the House early on was a bill dealing with performance audits of state agencies. And I know that you were supportive of that. Maybe you could elaborate a little bit on uh, why oh, you're supportive. Very much. Uh, a bill I co-sponsored was excited to see move forward. You know, an audit. Uh, make sure the dollars are spent where they say they're spent. That's what a simple audit is. A performance audit looks at how the dollars are spent, whether there's overlapping of duties between agencies or between within departments. It more looks at whether the dollars are wisely spent. And you know, nobody, uh, nobody would ever accuse a state government or, or most governments of being efficient, wise. Uh, and uh, this this gets right at that. Sure, sure. And uh, that's what's important. We need to we need to look at. Uh, I think taxpayers expect us to make sure we spend every dollar as wisely as we possibly can. And you mentioned early on uh, workers' compensation and how that's <laughs> been an issue that's been boiling over a little bit over the last few years. What are your thoughts on workers' comp reform? Well, actually, uh, I I expressed an interest in that and have been working with a couple of legislators, and uh, we are bringing the bill forward. Uh, it probably will be one of the big bills this fall. Um, because it's a, it has the potential to be a massive, uh, a massive bill. Mm -hmm. It affects a lot of. There's a lot of moving parts. A lot of uh, all businesses touch workman's compensation in mm -hmm. some reform. And you know the challenge we have with our current system is it's a high cost system. It, it doesn't encourage competition because we're a state run system. Um, part of the answer is bring competition in the marketplace. And you know the other challenge with workman's compensation reform, and I said this uh, as I, last year as I was listening and talking to people is, you know, we've got a high cost system and we've got a system that uh, too often doesn't take care of the injured worker. And uh, so frankly, in some ways we have the worst of both worlds. It doesn't take care of the injured worker effectively. And everybody seemed to have a story of uh, either either workman's compensation fraud where somebody was getting workman's compensation they probably shouldn't have, or somebody wasn't getting it when they were legitimately injured. And um, I think that's uh, an issue that has to be addressed. Um, mm -hmm. And as we attract, tried to attract companies into Fayette County, um, we heard that as one of the limiting factors. So excited and excited to work on that. That's good. And it sounds like the, the focus of your time here in Columbus has been on jobs and the economy, but there's a number of other issues that legislators have been working on concurrently with that. And uh, one of them was a bill that you got out of the House with large mm -hmm. bipartisan support, mm -hmm. House Bill 128. Mm -hmm. uh, could you elaborate a little bit on uh, that bill? You know, we, we have the opportunity as legislators to work on big bills and little bills. Sure. And this, this frankly, was a smaller bill, uh, very nearly focused. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, in Fayette County, uh, as a county commissioner, we, we had a countywide um, EMS service. And um, 
you're always struggling for volunteers, for people that are qualified, certified, and certainly, you know, if you're injured, you want you want the best possible care possible. Of course. But the person driving the vehicle doesn't necessarily have to be a, an EMT. Uh, just needs somebody that's trained and has the, the first responder certification. Mm -hmm. So this bill, uh, working with uh, um, other representatives of both aisles, you know, we passed a bill that allowed um, any first responder to drive that emergency vehicle. Allows the injured person to get to the hospital quicker. Mainly for rural areas where they depend on uh, volunteer services, but That's it's great. important to those areas. And that bill is currently in the Ohio Senate? It's over in the Ohio Senate. and. Looks like we'll get to get it out of the Senate and passed and <laughs> signed into law. And that's pretty exciting for a, a freshman legislator to get a bill passed. <laughs> oh, for sure. Now, you've got uh, a situation where your district actually isn't too far from Columbus, but uh, your constituents watching this uh, may wonder about what a, a typical day is like for you, if there is a typical day for a state <laughs> there, legislator. <laughs> there is no typical day. Um, and, you know, the, the most exciting thing about this job is... Uh, you know, it's not necessarily passing the bills, working, it's, I mean, those are important things, that's an sure. important function of the job. But uh, helping constituents with the issues that they may have, specifically, uh, whether that's a concern, you know, trying to work through the process of state government or local mm -hmm. government, you know, we assist with those sorts of things. But, um, you know, we've gotten in a couple, just uh, the, that little, that EMS bill came through a, through a concern of a, a constituent. And we're working on several smaller bills dealing with constituent concerns, and those are truly exciting. How often do you get to get back to the district, or how often are you in Columbus? Every chance is I get. Uh, <laughs> I try to stay uh, out here as much as I possible, love, right? I love to visit Columbus. <laughs> this is where a uh, big piece of the job is, but this isn't home. Sure, uh, sure. The home is in Pickaway, Fayette, Ross, and, uh, you know, the interesting thing is I find I miss it a lot more mm -hmm. um, the last time I spend there. So. so any chance I get an opportunity to be back home, we're back home. And, you know, specifically, um, you know, with you know, with children still in school, we've mm -hmm. got all those activities, and uh, and uh, I do some of my best constituent work at uh, you know basketball, football games, uh, sure. You know, in the grocery store, at church. Um, sure, see you're, those you're, sorts of things. You're still active back in the district. Very that's much so. fair, that's very, very good. So. And how's your family dealing with the transition? Are they enjoying having you here in Columbus? <laughs> um, sometimes they're glad I'm not home. <laughs> sure. Um, sometimes they wish I was home more, but that it's uh, that's part of the part of the challenge, and uh, they've they've stepped up in a great way. As you approach uh, into the summer months here, as we, we get a little bit closer to that, are there other legislative issues that you're working on in your committees or that you're uh, going to be working on introducing here in the near future, in the near term? Uh, the, the big thing that uh, is, you know, as, as, we've, as we've moved out of finance mm -hmm. is that workman's compensation sure. reform. Sure, sure. Um, working with a variety of legislatures, people throughout the industry, employers back in the district, um, you know, this is a tremendous need. And then several other smaller bills that... Uh, constituents are asking us to work on. <laughs> you talked a lot about how you had a, a varied background being a county elected official but also yeah. serving on the State Farm Bureau. <laughs> what do you think was the, the the one thing that prepped you the most for this job, if there was one thing? Uh, I'll tell you, that, uh, actually both those things were great assets. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, as President of Ohio Farm Bureau I had an opportunity to you know, to see how government works at the state level and federal level, and frankly, how it doesn't work, mm -hmm. how 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 some how some things don't get done, and uh, and I you know I've testified in front of Congress, I've um, met congressmen and, and uh, discussed issues with them, and mm -hmm. tried to impact their decisions and votes in a positive manner. So that was a great experience. And then the county commissioner level, I've represented people, um, balanced budgets for 14 years, and and you know have know the people that get things done. In a county and how how the system works. So those are all good. But I'll tell you the best thing that uh, was really um, was running a business, um, managing the farm. Um, you know, trying to make my way in this world. Um, you know, that's those are skills that uh, have been most helpful. Very good. Very good. Well, we've gonna we're gonna put your uh, your contact information for your office on on the screen so your constituents will be able to see that. Is there a better way for them to get in touch with you? Should they call you? Should they stop by your house? Should they uh, <laughs> grab you in the grocery store as you um, mentioned? <laughs> all those things work. All good. those things very much work. But uh, probably the best way uh, is calling the office, talking to Mother Teresa and Vanessa. And very good. Well, Representative Peterson, thank you very, very much for joining us today. Thank you. Great we to be appreciate, here. Hope you'll come back on after the uh, the budget's all done and we can talk about some more issues facing uh, your district down in southwest Ohio. I'd love to do that. Very good. You've been watching Ohio in Focus, the program that brings state government to you. Thank you for joining us.